Bokitov covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling situation uh, going on in Syria. But before we go to Syria, uh, just a few moments ago, RT News as well as TASS both have reported that a Russian Su-27 fighter has intercepted a U.S. B-52 bomber over the Baltic uh, Sea. This is something that is a very unusual event to see happening. Uh, uh, near the Russian borders as a B-52 bomber because they've not been deployed in Europe for quite some time. And in fact, uh, another article here on the Washington Post says in a rare deployment, the B-52 bombers are headed to Europe for training exercises. This was back on March the 2nd of 2016. It says three bombers, Stratfortress bombers, deployed to Europe last week to participate in a series of training exercises in Norway, a move that the top U.S. commander for the region called not normal. Uh, and of course, it definitely is not normal. And now a uh, Russian Sukhoi 27 has intercepted one of the Russian bombers there. And it's a very short article right now on RT. Read a little bit more in Russian news already coming out. TASS being reporting this as well in the Russian language. Uh, that the flight was intercepted by the Sukhoi 27 fighter and he was escorted uh, out away from the border of Russia. Uh, it also noted that the, that the B-52 was in international waters. There were no incidents reported and according to TASS news agency, the, uh, the B-52 bomber, or excuse me, the, the Sukhoi was at a safe distance from the B-52 bomber uh, as they escorted him away from the Russian border. Uh, also, another very interesting situation as we've been watching this whole issue with Qatar unfold and the Saudi Kingdom, the Egyptians, all of them basically boycotting this country for their alleged ties with uh, uh, Iran and uh, of course as they say not just Iran but so uh, more so for funding as they call it terrorist groups inside of Syria well then WikiLeaks published this particular tweet this morning because we had mentioned the other day that that was kind of like the pot calling the kettle black and I thought it was a very interesting tweet that they brought out right here but uh, in WikiLeaks they had put on here when Hillary Clinton, one of her leaked emails, stated here, while this military para, para military operation is moving forward, we need to use our diplomatic and more traditional intelligence assets to bring pressure on the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which are providing clandestine financial and logistical support to ISIS and other radical Sunni groups in the region. Well, we know that the U.S. helped create that group, as it's been reported by many news agencies over the uh, several years here. And uh, But to see that Hillary Clinton had actually written uh, that both Qatar and Saudi Arabia were providing clandestine financial and logistic support to ISIS, and now Qatar is being singled out by Saudi Arabia and that of Egypt as a bad state. Well, they are a bad state, and so is Saudi Arabia, and so is Egypt. All of them are funding uh, terrorist organizations to topple Bashar al-Assad, and that, by the way, is beginning to uh, take full swing uh, ahead in the Middle East. In fact, let me, let me go to that before I come back here to North Korea. U.S.-led coalition begins on offenses to liberate Raqqa from ISIS. I thought that was a rather interesting uh, news post by Sputnik here that the U.S. is getting ready to liberate Raqqa from, from ISIS because it wasn't long ago when uh, RT News had published an article on April the 23rd that ISIS uh, essentially is moving its Syria headquarters from Raqqa to Del Azor uh, province. Now, no doubt there's still a large number of ISIS members in Raqqa, but the main advanced forces always are being given safe passage to go from one place to another. And of course, Del Azor down there on the southern part of Syria, closer to the Iraqi-Jordanian border where U.S. forces are, are working alongside of the Free Syrian Army and that of the British forces uh, to make, as it is called, safe zones inside of Syria. I believe those safe zones are going to end up being uh, only a launching pad for an attack on Damascus that will no doubt soon come up, and I'm sure I can tell you why, as we reported yesterday, uh, Syrian, uh, supposedly it was Syrian forces that were bombing down in uh, Dada, the city close down towards the border of, uh, let me get jump up here and grab you a map real quick to show you what I'm speaking about here. 
But uh, right down there on Dada, we had a uh, we had a situation here to where where the uh, forces, the Russian forces there. Uh, according to one group, it was Russian. Another group, it was the Sy it may have been the Syrian because it was being bombed with a by uh, Russian Sukhoi bombers, the Su-24. And as you can see here on your map here, Dada is right here in this location here. Al Suede, we know there's Russian special forces here. And if you can kind of imagine, uh, Syrian control kind of comes down, has Dada uh, right before Dada and back up again, comes down and has Al Suede. And here, and also in between here and to the left is controlled by other fighting groups. ISIS controls the area along the Israeli border. It is the Free Syrian Army in this area and the Free Syrian Army on the east of Al Suwaid. And today a major offensive has been launched uh, from the east of Al Suwaid against Al Suwaid. And of course Russia and Syria are bombing down here in Dada because they could not get them to go along with helping the Syrian government. They claim to be neutral, uh, but no doubt more and more territory is being lost. And that is also putting a dangerous situation for Damascus. There is also uh, a pocket here of the Al-Qaeda al-Nusra front here to the northeast of Damascus, one here to the south. And, uh, and of course, if they get control, uh, is the other thing we were bringing to you the other day here, is that U.S. British forces are over in this region of the map. Let's see, where are we at here? No, right down here. They're right in this area here. This is where Al Tanf is located at. But you have Deir el Zor up here where the Syrian airport is used to conduct campaigns in the eastern part of the country. Palmyra constantly coming under attack. And of course, Damascus. So there is a fight to gain these controls. By the way, if any of you guys happen to play around with maps, I am trying to learn how to be able to edit these maps here so that we can put things on there for you, shade areas, kind of like you see on regular news. I'm totally uh, oblivious to how that actually works. So anybody that knows that can give me a helping hand, give me a website that I should use, something that is simple, uh, that would really be wonderful. Uh, also came out today, Russia, this is from Brasco Aad, Russia just a few days ago uh, stated here the YPG and ISIS made a deal with each other in which ISIS will be granted a free passage to the southeast Syria, Deir Azor. Uh, so I guess what they've done is they have opened up the door because the YPG uh, working with the United States as we were just seeing here on the Sputnik news source there is getting ready to launch an offensive against Raqqa. So they have already been given a safe passage. In other words, if you want to get out and go down and fight down around Deir Zord against the Syrian forces, great. If not, then you're going to die here while we take the city. So just interesting how ISIS is just willing to move whenever uh, the U.S. forces come near. They're willing to go ahead and relocate and U.S. always seems to open up a corridor for them. That's just a bit odd. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it, guys. It is a bit odd. You, you have to admit that. All right, back it up real quick here. This was one other news source I wanted to uh, share with you. The North Korean uh, news are, uh, and I, when I say North Korean news, this English language here, I do not believe that this is actually ran by the Kim Jong-un group. I believe this is actually uh, information coming out from South Korea, but they call it the nknews.org. And it says, U.S. nuclear power fast track submarine arrives in South Korea. The USS Cheyenne adds to the considerable naval arsenal deployed to East Asia by U.S. in recent months. U.S. nuclear power fast attack submarine, the USS Cheyenne, arrived at the Busan port of South Korea on Tuesday armed with Tomahawk cruise missiles, sub-harpoon anti-missiles, anti-ship missiles, the commander of the U.S. Naval Forces of Korea announced. The CNFK said the entry of the USS Cheyenne, a Los Angeles-class submarine, is a routine visit during a regular scheduled deployment to the Western Pacific and did not provide further details. Uh, you just cannot help, the, though, to wonder, though, that much buildup of forces in the region, something is about ready to go down. Also, in other news as well, and I did not, I thought I actually had this up here, uh, the, uh, the Free Syrian Army has downed a Russian Sukhoi, uh, not a Russian, but a Syrian Sukhoi plane. Uh, let me just see if I can pull that back up. Syria downed plane there, um, because that just happened. Uh, 
I believe that was actually yesterday evening that this actually took place. Um, yes, here we go right here. Reuters is reporting this as well. Syrian rebels say Syrian army plane down east of Damascus. That is true. The wreckage has already been shown on this. We did not uh, see much of anything else. And again, as I said, the Free Syrian Army has launched an offensive, uh, a major offensive against Al Suwaid. Uh, and they are definitely using U.S. type of military equipment. I've been looking at some of these on Twitter, some of the, uh, the, the special uh, equipment that is being used that is obviously being used by or being provided by the U.S. military for the Free Syrian Army, which we know is no, no uh, surprise. The U.S. Uh, has been training the Free Syrian Army inside of Jordanian uh, country for many, many years. Uh, years now already since they've been down in this region so it's nothing less to be expected to be that that they would be providing them with the weapons that they need to try to topple the uh, tr topple President Bashar al-Assad. I'm Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live Shalom and oh by one of the one thing I want to real quick just share with you um, Heidi Begley uh, Paul Begley's wife, wife was in the hospital yesterday for a hip operation. Those of you that uh, Christians, praying Christians, I would ask you to remember her in prayer. I know having hip issues is a major, major issue, and I certainly feel for her. God bless you, and shalom.